And we're back. Okay, so that was a had a nice big uh, nice big supper there. So I'm yeah amped and ready to get back to the end of Undertale. So and yeah, where we last left off, we were uh, yeah fighting this creepy bastardized shambling greater dog amalgamate, which was um, so yeah. What were we beckoned him already? So now I think we want to pet him at this point. It's kind of funny actually the way you beat this guy. Am I actually recording here? The my audio? I keep, I keep asking. Every time I stream, I I, I get that. <laughs> Where it's just like, it's, did I remember to turn the microphone on? But yeah. Okay. Anyway, so the yeah, Amalgam seems happy. Maybe. Oh, oh, that's adorable. Okay, that's less adorable. <laughs> uh, and if, again, this I don't know what it is. It's just like the whole, just like the sound, the atmosphere, everything about this area just gives me the freaking creeps um what do we do with him this time so he's on the walls i guess uh let's play with him then no oh, yeah it's picking up now <laughs> honestly i think everything about this i think honestly the sound design in this game the from like just the uh sound effects and the music and j j just like the audio in general is probably like this i'd say the strongest point of the game overall in my opinion, I think. It's just like, the And I missed what he twitching wildly. I guess, do we pet him? Ooh, stage one happiness froth. That's disgusting, but okay. It's probably good for us. <laughs> oh, oh, he got me that time. That sucks. Okay, let's see if we can calm this guy down. Oh! <laughs> now we got to finish things off with the dog song here, even though it's... Apparently a bunch of he's got like a bunch of cats in between his legs or something it looks like unless those are supposed to be dogs I don't know they look like cats to me He's satisfied I'm satisfied apparently he was endogeny after all which I don't know what that means <laughs> And we're back to the creepy lab So yeah I think we're uh, pretty much near the end of it here I've just got oh god oh god is that my mouse cursor Oh how embarrassing <laughs> Okay, get that out of the way there. And, uh, yeah, resume where we left off. So, uh, the, uh, yeah, basically, get, kind of getting, like, a disturbing picture of, like, what's, what, basically, uh, kind of Alphys's secret life there. Did I read this one? DT, oh, yeah, that's, or actually, what is DT, oh, determination, okay, DT is probably determination. So, determination extraction machine. Oh, you know what? That makes sense. I actually never realized. So if it's that's probably the machine that they used to get the determination out of the human souls. So I, I bet you that's what Flowey was. Okay, so we are, we're actually getting like a little bit of information there about uh, kind of the nature of that giant monstrosity that you fight at the end of the neutral game against Flowey. That was that machine he's in is probably the thing that he was planning to use to suck the determination out of the human souls and become God. So. Kind of wonder how he got the thing in the first place, but I guess he can go wherever he wants. But uh, the families keep calling me to ask if everyone is coming home. What am I supposed to say? Yeah, Alphys is. I, I've, I'm thinking back on it. I think I might have been a bit too hard on her. She's a bit. She's in kind of a tough situation, so it's like. It's not exactly great that she, you know, turned all of the monsters dead relatives into giant shambling zombies and uh told them all that they were going to be <laughs> coming back and everything was going to happen and then refused to let them know what was actually going on <laughs> that's that last line there was just thanks asgore <laughs> i don't know but yeah it's uh, alphys like i said i don't hate alphys hate alphys or anything she's just She's just kind of a garbage character. Ha ha ha. That was a joke. Now, where is it? Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay, I, f I actually forgot about this fight, so we might actually have another one after this. Oh, and we don't even get the battle music on this one either. Just maximum, maximum creepiness. I actually don't remember anything about this fight. Um, you know what? Heckling was... So it looks kind of like the, the... What were they called? Snow something? Heckling was the fastest way to beat those guys, so we'll try heckling. You look horrible. Why are you even alive? I'm confused. Did we say that or didn't we? 
Oh, right, I remember now that this is not really like an actual fight. Or I think... Laughing, or he hasn't made a joke yet. Hmm. That's a little bit creepy. Still, I'm fine with being creepy as long or as, lo as long as we don't have like an actual fight on our hands. I'm just I'm relaxed. Okay, looks like the jokes are what this thing is responding to. It's so it's like all of the monsters in this area are kind of yeah, kind of kind of amalgams of different yeah amalgamates of different uh, monsters in the game. Like I can see a couple of the turnip monsters there. The I forget what it was called, Snow Drake or something, Snow something or other. And maybe is that Shiren on the bottom there? I don't know. Anyways. Uh, I've had about... Okay, good. She's completely calm. So am I. And that gets us our blue key. And... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we can... Uh, yeah, put our keys in here now. Actually, in fact, that was the way... I, that was the reason I came back this way. Because I'm pretty sure there was a key that I missed in the... Uh, in the videotape room. So was I done talking about Alphys? Yeah, it's like it, it's kind of bad that she, you know, did all this science stuff to people's dead relatives and then kept it from them after telling them that they were like she was going to bring them all back. But you know, she was in kind of a tough situation. Tough, yeah, really a tough position there. So I guess I can kind of forgive her for that. Even still, even so, yeah, it's like she's not a horrible person. She just. I don't know. That coupled with the fact that she just really annoyed me during the whole stint in Hotland. And I believe that's the last key, so we should be coming to the end of this area. And then that's it. That's going to be the end of the game after this. We just go, it's a straight shot to the final boss. There's, it, and yeah, like I said, there's nothing you can do beyond this point. That's part of another part of the reason why I think that you can just watch the pacifist ending on YouTube and not really miss out on anything. Just because... It's like a, kind of the fun of your first playthrough of Undertale. It's kind of going through and seeing, sort of playing through your own way, seeing who you're going to end up killing, who you're going to end up sparing, and just how much. And also, also the different choices you make as well sort of give you uh, different, you know, like I said, kind of different gags depending on your uh, choices at each little branch. And can we use the elevator? It seems to have lost its power. But, uh... Oh, and this one's turned off. I think these will turn back on uh, on the way back, and we'll get some information. But, uh, anyways, so, but the thing with the... Oh, we got a creepy face on the terminal there. That's lovely. <laughs> with a heart in it. I actually... That is a... I wonder if that heart there is supposed to be an actual human soul that's, like, powering this whole place, or if that's just, like, part of the design, and... Okay. Okay. They're closing in on us. Oh, good. Alphys to the rescue. I guess that's the one thing that she's good for. It actually saves me from <laughs> all of this disturbing nonsense. What food? What has... What does she feed him? What do... Like, these shambling melt amalgams of melted monsters fused together... What do they eat? <laughs> or I guess, actually, I think I remember seeing, like, a big thing of dog food up in her lab now that I think of it. I bet you that's what that's for. I never made that connection until now. That's kind of neat. Wait, what if I hadn't bought the potato chips? I mean, I know for a fact that they would have uh, still attacked you, but... Um, anyways, I was saying something about... Oh yeah, basically, the pacifist playthrough, there's really no real decisions to be made. It's like, your first playthrough, you're going through probably the neutral route, and everybody's experience is going to be just a little bit different based on, you know, sort of who you killed and what decisions you made, determining which uh, sort of jokes you get as you go through the game. But on a pacifist run, there really aren't any sort of real decisions to be made. It's like, you make all the decisions you didn't make the first time so that you end up seeing all of the jokes in the end. Oh yeah, and this was, yeah, she was afraid she might not come back. But she was thought she would be too afraid to tell the truth and run away or do something cowardly, which is kind of your main, uh, 
I mean, so yeah, sort of an obvious reference to suicide there was sort of gives the impression that on the all of the neutral endings where she just sort of disappears kind of gives the kind of alludes to the fact that she probably killed herself in all those endings, which is kind of sad. Pretty sad, actually. It makes you feel kind of bad in retrospect. Kind of makes me feel bad in retrospect for saying like what a great ending it was I got the first time through the game where Metaton takes over everything. And yeah, here she's just kind of telling us everything that we figured out already from the terminals. Oh yeah, th th this is kind of an interesting... Actually, I think this might be the first time we see this, the sort of the sciencing out the, f the reason for their, the monsters being so much weaker than humans, that being that they apparently have less physical matter in their bodies, which is, I guess, a good a as good an excuse as any, but... Oh yeah, and apart from the fact that there's like no real decisions to be made, it's like basically everybody's pacifist run through the game is going to be pretty much exactly the same. Like from here to the end, it's just strictly linear. You're going to see the, everyone's going to see the exact same thing. There's no, like as opposed to your first playthrough, that's like very personal, very, everyone's experience is different. With this, everybody sees the same thing. There's no reason, there's nothing uniquely personal about your own pacifist run through the game so you might as well just watch it on youtube if you don't uh feel like playing through the game again which is an understandable sentiment i think but steven that even all that said though like the yeah i'm still glad that i did play through this game a second time in the end to see all this yeah she really is just kind of giving a recap or i guess kind of filling out all this all the stuff that you probably figure out out already reading through all those terminals. Ah, oh, but now she has, yeah, apparently gathered the courage to stand up and tell the truth. So that's good. So yeah, she, you know, she kind of redeems herself in the end. And yeah, it turns out, well, or I guess I won't spoil the ending, but yeah, it does turn out well in the end, which is good. Happy endings are good. Spoiling the ending a bit here, not saying it's a happy ending, but... And then, yep, she and the amalgams just waltz out of there. And that creepy face on the thing here, and the heart there, it makes me wonder if there's, like, something to this terminal. Because the red heart, like, uh, you, we sort of know now that the, the different human souls correspond to different colors. And the red heart there on that sort of power core, like, the red heart signifies not just our our character's soul, but also the soul of the first human as well. The red heart is sort of used to signify both of those things. Anyways, uh, candidate. Oh yeah, this. so she, here she's probably talking about what she ended up doing, how she ended up including Asriel in her experiments. And yeah, kind of Flowey's origin story here as well, which is... It doesn't really go to explain much. That's actually the one kind of... And then, yeah, he disappeared after that. And we'll we'll find out more about Flowey coming into the proper ending. Who is this voice that we haven't seen before? Or that we haven't heard before? Thanks to me, everything has fallen into place. See you soon. I mean, you'd think that it would have to be Flowey based on... Or based on what happens next. You'd figure that that's Flowey. But then in that case, why is it a voice that we haven't heard before. But, uh, anyways, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself there. And yeah, from this point on, you're completely locked into just like a straight shot to the ending. There's no backtracking beyond here. There's nothing to do but go forward onto, uh, onto, yeah, like the full ending. Uh, the, the true ending, really, but... And yeah, I don't know, it was, I thought it was really, all that stuff in the true lab, I thought was like just kind of really interesting, at least when I saw it the first time, and I, it sort of added a lot to the story, I think. I wish that they could have incorporated a bit more of that, those kind of plot and backstory elements into the neutral playthrough. I thought it would have made things a bit more interesting, and I kind of given the player a bit more incentive. Like, I feel that all these kind of unresolved questions I described earlier... Like, they're, they kind of bothered me at the end of the neutral playthrough, but there wasn't, there weren't really enough clue, there, was, there wasn't really enough sort of alluding to that 
undisclosed information or those unanswered questions to really make me think like I really need to go through and again and find out what's going on like I, I didn't really feel a ton of motivation to go through and play the game a second time to find out absolutely everything about what was really going on there wasn't there weren't enough mysteries to compel me to think that 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 like I absolutely absolutely needed to find out more about what was really going on here in the underground it's like uh the 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 neutral ending while not completely satisfying was enough of a complete ending to make me think okay this is just the end of the game i don't need to play anymore after this like i was left like somewhat unsatisfied by the neutral ending but not so much so that i like really had a very strong motivation and yeah this is all uh basically the same as uh as a regular playthrough and yeah 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 does he let us skip all this? I think this. I think we gotta just run through all this dialogue. I know what happened to your son. And apparently, so, uh, that's another kind of question I had. Is what? What did? How much do they actually know about Flowey? Because apparently, like a Alphys included Asriel in her experiments and put his soul into that flower. Like, did she? Uh, like, does she know, like, what happened to him in the end? But there are these, based, based on the little bit of information we got, just where she says the flower has disappeared, seems to indicate that he just vanished after she gave him the soul and uh, just kind of doesn't know what happened to him after that. And then what did happen to him after that, we can kind of, or I guess we can sort of find out from here specifically. Like, we kind of have a vague idea. He, he knows about saving and loading and has sort of had that power for a while and sort of just used it to do whatever he wants. But, but like, what is Flowey's deal? Why, do, why is he such a freakazoid, like, psychopathic killing monster? Uh, that's really sort of the main unresolved question at this point, is what is the deal with Flowey? And uh, that's what we're going to end up going into here with the ending. And when I say what is the deal with Flowey, it really means sort of what is the deal with Azriel, since we basically all but confirmed at this point that they are one and the same character. I didn't... yeah, there's no way I fucked anything up at this point. There, We will be rescued in the end from having to replay this fight. I think so. Did I fuck something up? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yay! Goat Mom to the rescue once again. <laughs> miserable, miserable creature. <laughs> yeah, they, they used to be married, as you recall. <laughs> and this was kind of, kind of a long walk for her to get here, actually, now that I think of it. Good timing, though, at least. sacrifice someone simply to let someone now i don't know who is she referring to is she is that a shot at asgore for him murdering all the or you know killing all those other humans or is that like she's saying that we shouldn't have to sacrifice asgore okay it, it, it sounds in, in context that she's talking about not wanting us to have to kill asgore <laughs> he's a terrible miserable creature <laughs> this is the, the relationship between these two is really <laughs> quite, quite amusing, I think, the back and forth between them beyond this point. <laughs> and again, what, what kind of talk is that? I mean, again, I wonder, I really wonder what kind of queen she must have been. Oh yeah, this, this is sort of lampshading a sort of plot hole here, because we know that, yeah, you could go, th rather than just collecting the human souls on this side of the barrier. We know that you can get through the barrier with one soul, absorb it, and then walk through the barrier like that. That's what we that's how we were gonna get out, was by absorbing Asgore's soul and walking out. That's how Asriel did it when he absorbed the first human soul, and Asgore apparently was just too much of a pussy for some reason. I don't really know what his excuse was. His, I guess he's just sort of weak-willed and didn't really want to have to go across and murder six humans. And it makes kind of makes me wonder if Tori, Toriel's problem with that was 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 it actually the morality of it, or was she just she was like pissed off at him for being such like a weak willed little pussy bitch essentially, and uh, 
just sort of left him in disgust. That, that, that's sort of one interpretation that you could throw on it. That uh, <laughs> sort of sort of an alternate interpretation of Toriel's character, which I find kind of amusing. Really, though, she's I honestly think she's kind of too nice and sweet for <laughs> any sort any sort of thing like that. And again, I'm blabbing and not advancing the text just because this is what happens when I try to commentate over RPGs and text and reading and whatnot. <laughs> oh yeah, and then, and then they all get to meet each other. That's kind, of, that's kind of interesting, I think, that Undyne and Toriel don't know each other. I'm actually not entirely clear on the timeline as far as when... How long ago it was that Toriel left uh, Asgore, and you know, sort of when Undyne became the royal, royal guard and all that kind of stuff. I mean, apparently she must have been appointed to the, to the royal guard after Toriel left, but and yeah, apparently all the friends are coming in to tell everybody that we should be friends and frolic in the fields of friendship and. Oh, and apparently Alphys doesn't even know Tor, which seems weird, since I thought that she was appointed royal scientist, like, right near the very beginning of it, like, right after the death of Asriel. At least that was the understanding I got. Because, yeah, in order, in order to do experiments with his soul, she must have started using that thing, like, right after his death. So initially, she must have been the royal scientist, even at the time, so, I don't know. I'm, sh I'm sure that it all makes sense. There's enough att attention to detail in all the other aspects of the game that I'm sure you can make sense of sort of the exact timeline of everything. Otherwise, in fact, I, I should probably look on the wiki after I'm done this playthrough to sort of straighten everything out in my mind. And again, that's, that's like two of them who say, oh, there's two, uh, two Asgores. This confused me at first because I thought, like, oh, apparently they knew each other, though, from before, but actually I forgot that they... Oh, and I actually just noticed this. Asgore's... Asgore's reaction to the fact that she knows Sans is... I never actually... Apparently everybody seems weirded out. Undyne, too, seems weirded out by the fact that they know each other. But yeah, I completely forgot that they knew each other from their little knock-knock dokes jokes through the door thing. So yeah, everybody gets to meet, and it's all, all of our friends get to be friends with each other, and it's just a happy ending after all. That's wonderful. It's the best day of my life. <laughs> that was an obvious one, too. <laughs> oh, and yeah, again, <laughs> Asgore's reaction to that is great. <laughs> or did his face change earlier? I don't know. I, 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 I like to think that that was the crying was in reaction to that joke. That's a that's a wonderful turn of phrase there from fish person Undyne there. <laughs> that's exactly what she was saying. Oh, they're going for it. Disgusting. Thank you, Toriel. <laughs> Yay, the story is happy end after all. Oh, apparently Pyrus master master masterminded this whole friendship get-together. That's sweet. I always thought he was cleverer than we gave him credit for. Oh yeah, and I guess it was just a complete coincidence though that Toriel got here at the same time. <laughs> and that brings back the little bit we got from the conversation with Sans in Grillbees about the flower talking to Papyrus. And here we go indeed. It was all a ruse by Flowey. Because yeah, if you actually go through the game multiple times and like go in unspoiled and try to figure out on your own how to get uh, the best ending. So basically the way it works is Flowey gives you little hints as you go through the game each time and he's sort of guiding you towards the path to getting the, the true ending. And so you'd think, oh, he's actually trying to make us all friends, but it turns out that this is the reason 
he has been giving us hints and telling us not to kill everyone all this time, just so that he could gather everyone together so they can get the human souls as well as all of our the boss monster souls as well. And it's all our fault. Oh, and now we get his true form. <laughs> okay, a, a, a little bit of character... A little bit of insight into Flowey's motivations here as well. Yep, and that's just like he does with the neutral ending as well. That's what that's what he's here for. He wants the game to go on forever. Okay, that that seems like a good deal. Oh no. Well, I think this is like the 50th time that he's like done this and the outcome has been the same like every time. Oh no, it was different this time. They actually reflected the bullets. I, as I, I misremembered. I thought they just heal you like they always do. <laughs> Hooray! Just like yeah, the way that like now that you you go you go through the pacifist ending and you sort of get befriend all of the characters and get like a really good get to know them all really well at this point with with all the date scenes and everything and the extra scenes with Alphys and just like you you know all of the characters and their motivate their motivations and their backstories really well so it really and and yeah they really it makes sense that the sort of the path to the path pacifist ending is to really make you go through and do all of that because it's like the impact of this whole scene is just so much stronger now that you've actually sort of gone through and that you know these characters so well it's like i've always said actually that i i i think that the just, just the likability of uh, all of the characters in this game is, is the strongest point of the game or i guess next to the sound no okay okay characters strongest point of the game sound design second strongest point Oh, and it's all the randos come in to help as well. Oh, and actually, you notice there we get a little, con a little, a little battle monster sprite for the little monster kid who was harassing us during the Undyne section. That's the only place on a non-genocide playthrough that you'll get to see that. And yeah, as you might imagine, yeah, on the genocide playthrough, you actually do end up fighting the little monster kid. Which is worth seeing. I'm not. I'm never again. Like I said, I'm never actually going to do a genocide playthrough on my own just because it's so tedious. But I think it's worth watching. Kind of the extra bits that you see on the genocide playthrough on YouTube. I, I recommend going and checking that out at some point. There's enough interesting stuff there and extra extra plot bits as well, especially concerning uh, sort of Flowey's character and also the history of the, sort of the first fallen human and all that. And yeah, apparently all the rando is showing up did nothing but add extra fuel to Flowey's little soul vacuum. And here it is, his true form. Here we go. <laughs> what's, with, what's with that striped shirt that freaking... I don't know. Was, what's it? Uh, he's like a referee at like a football game or some shit. <laughs> Or I guess it's kind of reversing, if you reverse the stripes, at least. And the final boss is... Emo Goat Man, or Goat Kid, I guess. <laughs> oh, he seems so friendly now, though. Apparently he's our best friend. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Now he looks less friendly. 